Hello and welcome, everybody. Yes, diabetes is reversible and so is hypertension. I want to start with these statements so that you all know what the topic is today. Today is hypertension and diabetes. One is a condition, it's a symptom, it's a hypertension, and the other one is a horrible disease, and both of them can be of course, you can prevent them and you can reverse them. Uh, we will talk about this in this webinar. Welcome, everybody, to Gustavo's online book club. We are currently reading Dr. McDougall's Medicine, a Challenging uh, Second Opinion by Dr. John McDougall. If you are watching this as a replay later on in YouTube, you can read the description below the video and there's going to be, there are going to be links that are very important there. All right. So wonderful. I hope you had a wonderful week. And um, I want to mention that, um, number one, this week is my birthday week. So I have planned a week of celebrations with really awesome webinars. So today we start with this webinar. Remember that there's only one more left and that's next Monday. And um, we finish this current book. And I am now announcing the book that we will be reading in February. I hope that you will all attend. I know that you, some of you may have different views on this topic, but um, it is always a good idea to get somebody else's perspective on a topic. And um, at least I like it. I like my brain to be uh, stimulated and, and I like to listen to all opinions and then make up my own. This is a book from a real friend, really good friend of mine. A few months ago, we read his book and it's called Own Your Health. This is in my book club and my YouTube channel, and it's by Glenn Mercer with uh, 75 Recipes by Chef AJ. And uh, Glenn Mercer just published his new and very popular book, I must say, and it's called Food is Climate. Like I said earlier, you may or may not believe in climate change. Uh, I think that this is a short book. I think you will like to read about how food is produced and moved around and what things it does to the soil. And I mean, there are things that um, just producing and, and raising animals in such large numbers in enclosed spaces does to our health, at least. So I, I think, I hope that you will get it. And there are also 65 recipes here and Glenn told me yesterday that those of you who purchased the book, and this is on Amazon, he, you will receive a gift of 25 um, recipes, most popular recipes from Chef AJ in a PDF. I also want to say that I don't get any financial benefit from any of these book clubs from the, sell, from the sales of books. This book is sold only on Amazon in paperback also in audiobook and also in Kindle. So uh, I, I encourage you to get it. And uh, once you get it, um, you will receive an email from me with directions on how to get your gift. All right, so that's gonna be that. Um, also on Tuesdays, I have tea with Dr. T. If you wanna be a member of my fan club, send me an email. This Wednesday, I celebrate my birthday with one of my uh, best uh, friends, and uh, I consider him a friend, and in some ways a colleague, since we worked together so for several years on webinars, Dr. John McDougall. So I hope that you will register for that. First of all, here in this chat box, I'm going to put the link for you to register for the book club. It's free. Um, if you're watching the replay, it's going to be in the description area. And on Wednesday, Dr. McDougall and I are just going to sit down. He's going to be in his living room. I'm going to be in my living room. And um, 
we're going to chat about topics that interest both of us. He might even switch roles for once and um, interview me for a little while. So this is going to be an informative and fun webinar. I'm also putting the link right now to register for the Wednesday webinar with Dr. McDougall. Then on um, Friday, there's going to be a surprise email that you will get. I'm not going to tell you what it is. And then on Saturday, we have a guest from London, from England, who is an um, expert on um, binge eating, which I know is an issue and a challenge for a lot of people. And I think you will find this extremely helpful. That's on Saturday. And then on Sunday to finish the week, we will have an online concert here in my living room with my friend uh, Cecilia, who is a wonderful singer. And we will be playing and singing some really um, music that everybody loves. So I hope that you will uh, join me for all of them. If you cannot join um, live, go ahead and register now. And when, because when you reg register, then you will automatically get the replay. But if you don't register, you don't get it. So here's the last link. This link is for the Sunday concert. And let's get started. Okay, so um, make sure that you do go to my YouTube channel and you go to the playlist for the online book club because there's a wealth of information. You will find this book club. We also read The Starch Solution, which is there. We also read The Healthiest Diet on the Planet by Dr. John McDougall. We also uh, read Chef AJ's uh, book, which is called, oops, let me see, where is the other book? Um, Chef AJ's book, um, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss. And we also read Reversing Diabetes by Dr. Neil Barnard. So let's start today. I'm going to start with chapter seven first and then go to chapter six. And um, chapter seven is about diabetes. I consider myself somewhat an expert, even though I am not a medical doctor, uh, but I don't have to be a medical doctor to understand how diabetes uh, develops and how it works and how it can, we can reverse it. And, and, um, and of course, we can uh, make sure that, that, uh, that we don't get it if we don't have it. Um, we can understand that. I cannot and will not talk to you about prescription drugs. I won't talk to you about treating it with, with medicine or how to get off medicines. But I will tell you how uh, this works so that you will finally understand because there's so much confusion. And I have done so many webinars with Dr. McDougall and other doctors about diabetes, including the book club on diabetes. That um, and, and this disease is what made me search really for a way to, um, to, uh, to avoid this this is in my life because in my side of it, in one of in one side of my family diabetes is very common and no it is not passed on from from generation to generation what is passed on is those recipes and those ways of eating that produce that that cause diabetes but in most cases um, it's uh, totally totally preventable. So uh, let me share with you what I'm going to do today is not really talk. Hmm, it's not going to be me saying this. I'm a bridge between all of this knowledge that I got from doctors and you, and I will be passing it on to you. What I can do is put it in terms that you will understand because you or most of you here like me are not physicians so by having read and studied it so much i can put it now in gustavo's terms in regular people's terms so let's go if you have the book with you and if you 
don't, if you haven't gotten it yet, send me an email and I'll send you the free book because it's not available free anymore, but I'll do that for you. We're going to go to page 224 where Dr. McDougall tells us that, um, gives us um, an overview of what diabetes is and, and how it works. And he says, um, a high complex carbohydrate, and complex is the key word there because we're not talking about cakes, okay, or donuts. We're talking about complex carbohydrates like potatoes, sweet potatoes, beans, rice, etc. High fiber, very important, high fiber, low fat, moderate protein, no cholesterol diet is the key to the prevention and treatment of adult onset diabetes and of the complications seen with both forms of diabetes. All damaging factors in the environment will have greater impact on a victim of diabetes than on someone in good health. And I'm going to share, just in case that you don't have the book with you. I will share my screen so that you can uh, see what I am reading. This is the actual book. Point number two, it says all of the damaging factors in the environment will have greater impact on a victim of diabetes than on someone in good health. A health supporting diet and lifestyle are especially important for reducing the injury those elements can cause. Avoid all cholesterol, excess salt, excess proteins, excess fats, and environmental contaminants. Also, avoid, pro avoid alcohol, caffeine, and tobacco. Exercise daily in moderation. Make adjustments in your diet and medications only under the supervision of a qualified physician. Don't start... Um, adjusting your medication without your physician uh, overlooking that, okay? Reductions in medication after a change in diet depend upon the, upon the case. So for adult onset diabetics, cut dose of insulin in half on day of dietary change. Reduce by five to 10 units every two days thereafter based upon negative urine sugar tests or improved blood sugar readings. Stop taking diabetic pills on day of change. Check response with urine sugar and blood sugar tests. Patients still requiring medication should be treated with insulin rather than pills. Make sure, this is for your information, make sure that, that you are telling your doctor that you switch into a, another way of eating, which you're going to be very strict for at least 10 days so that you can see the results and that you will need him or her to monitor, at least be able to tell him or her um, what the changes are every day so that your medication and your insulin can be um, adjusted. Treat hypoglycemic reactions as usual with simple sugars. Check cholesterol and triglyceride levels initially and once a month while adjusting to the new diet and medication dosages. Your goals are, here are your goals, to live long and function fully by avoiding complications of diabetes, to take little or no medication for adult onset diabetics, to improve control over blood sugar levels, to avoid hypoglycemia, to lower levels of cholesterol and triglycerides, to lose excess body weight, to feel well every day. And I want to show you that these are not things that Dr. McDougall are just throwing there um, with no proof. You can actually find these articles if you want. You can even print them and you could show it to your doctor. These are all studies and articles that are actually uh, serious studies published in medical journals.
They're not published in some kind of a tabloid, okay? These are medical journals, and these are serious, well-documented studies of how diabetes can be avoided and how it can be reversed. There you go. You can see how many. All right. So how, how, and this is what I find appalling, how does diabetes start? I find that 95% or 99% of the people don't know. They have not been told by their doctors what really is that they have, what that they're being treated for the symptom and not the cause. So let's take a look. Give me one second here. I will paraphrase what Dr. McDougall says in many of the pages of this chapter seven. Okay, so listen carefully because the, when, I, when I learned this the first time, it was like this dark cloud disappeared. It was lifted from my eyes. It was a relief to know the truth. And this is just um, basic, basic uh, medical knowledge that you can learn and I can learn. We all have a pancreas. Well, most of us. Okay. So what does the pancreas do? Well, the pancreas uh, creates or, or, yeah, creates uh, or produces a hormone. And uh, you all know what that hormone is, right? That hormone is insulin. So we have a pancreas that produces insulin. And insulin is a hormone. So what, does, what is this hormone supposed to do? I'm just reading because I wrote down so that I could tell you in a very concise way. This hormone insulin is supposed to go inside our cells, especially our muscle cells, which are a, a large amount of our cells are muscle cells because it's what let us do the movements and the work that we have to do every single day. So insulin is supposed to go to all of these cells in the body. You can think of insulin as a key. This key is insulin. So this insulin goes and is supposed to, to go inside a lock and open the door. Insulin is going to those cells to open the cell so that glucose can go in. All right. Let me keep going with my explanation here. So uh, insulin attaches to a receptor on the cell's surface and causes the cell membrane to permit glucose to enter. Insulin does the same thing for the next cell and the next cell and the next cell and every cell, the muscle cell in our bodies. It attaches to a receptor on the cell's surface, opens the door and ushers glucose in. In type 2 diabetes, this system does not work properly, okay? This is, what the confu this is where the confusion starts. Your pancreas still produces insulin. A lot of people think that there's something wrong with your pancreas. That may be true if you have type 1 diabetes. If you have type 2 diabetes, your pancreas is still making insulin. It's just that this key cannot go in the lock and it cannot open the cell. So that glucose that is supposed to go in the cell, it can't go in the cell. So where is it going to go? It's going into the bloodstream. And then you have readings of high blood sugar. So why doesn't this key go inside the, the key 
hole, okay? The, why can't it open it? Why can't it open the door? This is called insulin resistance. Yes, the insulin key is there, but it has trouble doing the job. Glucose cannot get into the cells and builds up in the bloodstream. So imagine, like I said, this key going into a lock. So now imagine that I put a big piece of gum inside the lock. There really isn't anything wrong with the lock. There's nothing wrong with the key. It's just that there is that the, the, the lock is jammed with the gum. So what does common sense mean? Does it mean that I have to get a new key? Does it mean that I have to change the lock? Well, no. I just have to get the gum out. I have to get the gum out. So does this key go in the door and opens it? So what is the gum? What is the analogy? The gum is fat. Yes, the gum is fat. And now for illustrative purposes here, I'm going to show you from reversing diabetes book, a picture right here. This is a cell. That's a cell, a muscle cell. These right here, this here is insulin that it needs to get to the receptors and get in and, and open the receptors so that the glucose, this glucose, can go inside the cell. But guess what? The cell is food full of fat. So it can't get in. It, can, it cannot open the lock. How did, how did that fat get there? Well, it got there <laughs> because we ate it. Because we had an excessive amount of animal products, animal meat of any kind of animal, eggs, dairy, milk, cream, cheese, um, things that in years, centuries past, were only available every now and then, and now they're available every day for every meal. And so the fat accumulates. I, I really like how uh, Dr. Barnard talks about this, so I'm going to just uh, read a little bit from this here. Um, something very, very important. He says, Dr. Barnard, I should emphasize that the fat inside your cells is different from the fat around your waistline. This is, these are things that are very confusing to most people because they see a thin person and they automatically think that they're healthy. And it may be true, but it doesn't necessarily mean be, means that because the person can be slim on the outside, but in the inside of the cells, there may be too much fat accumulated. Even if you are quite slim, you may still be accumulating fat within your muscle cells. The part, uh, so there was an experiment in Yale and the participants there were quite slim, average, averaging 141 pounds. They were young and healthy, but just as young people who smoke are setting the stage for cancer decades later, young people who accumulate fat inside their muscle cells are um, paving the way for diabetes. Until now, diabetes diets have not been designed to alter go what goes on inside the cell. Instead, they have been designed to compensate for the problem, so to speak. Because your cells cannot handle glucose, that is, insulin has trouble getting glucose into them, the diets limit sugars and foods that contain carbohydrate because when carbohydrate is 
digested is releases sugars. But what if a change in diet could actually alter the fat buildup within the cells and reverse reverse the trend toward um, gradual worsening insulin resistance? So basically, the way diabetes is treated today is um, treating the symptom, the high blood sugar. So they say, don't eat sugar. When in fact, the problem is that the sugar that your cells actually need, which is glucose, cannot get inside. And it cannot get inside because they're full of fat. So insulin cannot do its job. So he says, I'm not recommending you, uh, he said, uh, hold on just a minute. Um, the fat inside your cells is not permanent fixture. If the influx of fat stops, the fat inside the cells dissipates. And when that happens, the cells start to regain their normal function. So what, I mean, this is so common sense. I hope you can see this now. If you stop consuming excessive fat or for 10 days so that you can see the power of a whole food plant-based diet, if you stop consuming animal fat and you limit even, even you limit or you completely take out of your diet for 10 days, vegetable fats like all oils or even avocado or nuts and seeds just for 10 days. You're not going to die for 10 days. You will see the power of this because once you stop cramming on that, all that fat in the cells of your body, all of a sudden the cells start working the way they're supposed to. So finally, Dr. Barnard says, these studies show loudly and clearly that the accumulation of fat in the cells and all the problems it causes are not simply a matter of genes. Genes do play a role, but these effects are very much a matter of diet and it can change dramatically. Well, I hope that this has helped you in some way to understand the real issue, the real um, problem the real cause of diabetes. Please, if you want to ask a question or, um, uh, or comment, do so. By the way, sorry, parenthesis here. When you register for these webinars that I um, am planning, if they're multi-dates, like it's for four Mondays or four Sundays, you cannot choose a day. The way it's designed that is a block. So when you register and it asks you to select a date, that is a little misleading because you have to click on the thing that says register to all dates below, and then you can register. You cannot click on a specific date. That only happens when it's a series of days. Okay. So whether you attend all of them, it's inconsequential. But to register, you must choose register to all dates below and not choose a day because you won't be able to register. Okay, so going back now uh, to Dr. McDougall, basically Dr. McDougall says the exact same thing in chapter seven about diabetes. So I'm going to go to the beginning of chapter seven and just highlight a few spots, okay? So if you have the book, with you. I'm going to tell you that I am in page um, 204, okay? And I will go back here and share my screen so that you can see. All right, so this is page 204. And Dr. McDougall says that insulin is a hormone made in the pancreas. Basically, all that I just told you is here in page 204 and 205. And um, how do cells survive if they can't get any sugar for energy? Well, because the sugar cannot get into the cells to provide energy, the body 
switches to fats as alternative fuel sources. Body fats are broken down into fatty acids. These can pass into the cells without the aid of insulin and can provide life-sustaining energy. However, the use of this alternative metabolic pathway for yielding energy creates other problems. Of course, it creates other problems. If it's not, that's not really how it's meant to work. When, fat, when a fat is burned for energy, it produces ketones and acids. These byproducts of fat metabolism cause an acidic system. We don't want an acidic system. We want an alkaline system. Losses of, uh, losses of cell fluids and mineral imbalances. The fruity aroma of the ketones can be detected on a diabetic's breath. This characteristic odor is often an important clue in the diagnosis of diabetes that is out of control. The sugar draws water out of the body and dehydration can develop even to the point where it is life-threatening. Among the earliest signs of severe diabetes and frequency of urination and increased thirst in an attempt to replace the lost water. Diabetes is a disease that affects the entire body and alters the metabolism that regulates many different functions. All right. So here you have a little bit of an explanation of how sugar attach and distort protein. And I'm going to keep going. I hope that you read the whole chapter because we can't really read the whole chapter or we would have a, like a three-hour webinar, okay? So now I am on page 208, and it says that a diet that is higher in complex carbohydrates and lower in fats, along with better control of the blood sugar levels with frequent insulin injections, has been found to slow the development of two common diabetic problems. Both nerve and kidney function have been better preserved in patients maintained on this combined diet and insulin program as compared with patients who are less carefully controlled. Um, I, was, um, I had the privilege of attending many of the Dr. McDougall in-person uh, programs in Santa Rosa, California, and I saw it all the time. I saw all these people that were diabetic come in the program and the first day Dr. McDougall took them off the pills and the insulin. And if they needed anything, it would be insulin, but not pills. That's what I saw. I'm reporting that. I'm not saying that you do that without the supervision of your doctor. I'm just telling you what I saw and I'm telling you what he says. A new insulin delivery system called an insulin pump is worn all the time. So this is another, this is a, a, another, like he says here, we're at least a money-making thing. Okay, it's expensive um, and, uh, and it has its side effects, but it, there is something called an insulin pump and that will deliver insulin with, uh, uh, during the day. The insulin pump sounds great. Are there any hazards from this treatment that I should know about? Helpful as this pump is, it is still not even close to being as good as a healthy pancreas. Of course, you know, that's, that's obvious. And then he explains a little more in detail what the side effects are. Because nowadays the primary purpose in care of diabetics is to reduce the complications from the disease, prescribing a medication that may more, that may, uh, more than double the risk of death from heart disease makes no sense. Therefore, if an adult onset diabetic needs therapy in order to lower blood sugar, and few people actually do need it, then insulin is the only defensible choice. Um, and it's true. Dr. McDougall will uh, use insulin if necessary, although after a day, two at the most, on his 10-day program, insulin levels were uh, pretty much uh, back to normal. Um, Dr. McDougall says, your body makes 
all the insulin you will ever need. An important and surprising discovery about people with adult onset diabetes is that their pancreas produce as much natural insulin as and frequently more than people who don't have diabetes. The difference between the two groups is that the insulin from adult onset diabetics fails to function as efficiently as it should. On page 212, uh, Dr. McDougall says, the kind of diabetes you have is really caused by the foods your parents taught you to eat. If you had been raised on a healthier diet, it is highly likely that you would not have become a diabetic. Diabetes is rare among Africans, Asians, and Polynesians who eat foods that are primarily starches, vegetables, and fruits. However, when these people learn to eat the things offered by the rich Western diet, diabetes and complications of atherosclerosis flourish in all of them. What in their diet can cause healthy individuals to get diabetes so easily? Three harmful components in the rich American diet cause adult onset diabetes. First, the fats and the oils. That's why we learn how to make food with no oil and with little fat, eight to 10% of the calories per day at the most. And uh, maybe 10, uh, I think that up to 20 could be, uh, is allowed in the starch solution. But you do want to keep it below, if possible, below 20. And better yet, if it's below 15, 10, 15. First, the fats and the oils, which account to 40 to 50% of the calorie content of our diet, act by interfering with insulin activity. The cells of the body become unable to respond to the natural insulin produced by the pancreas and also the insulin injected by means of a syringe. You can put as much, uh, as much insulin as you want, but if the insulin cannot get in there because this key cannot get in the log, it won't matter. This effect of fats and oils has been known for more than 50 years, and it gives you a, their um, a, uh, reference, number 43. Two days of fat diet. Well, these are graphs that later on you can take a, a look and see how um, insulin works with these different kinds of foods. Then he talks about Dr. Sweeney's experiments, which are very, very eye-opening, and I encourage you to, to read it. And um, talks about the characteristics of the American diet. And uh, it says here that one of the character characteristics of the American diet uh, that encourages the diabetic condition is the lack of fiber. It's a nation or a world that is lacking in fiber nowadays. All animal products, which for a lot of the standard American diet uh, is most of the things that people eat, all animal products, they lack fiber entirely. There is zero. There's no fiber there. Most processed foods, such as white rice and white bread, have had much of the fiber removed. Fiber, by several mechanisms, slows the absorption into the bloodstream of the products of digestion of simple and complex carbohydrates found in the foods. This gradual release of sugar into the bloodstream is believed to be better synchronized with the action of the body's insulin-secreting cells. Simply adding more fiber to a diet without changing its content of fat and carbohydrates improves the blood sugar levels in diabetics. Another complementary quality of a starch-centered diet is that it aids almost effortlessly weight reduction in obese persons until they reach a healthy, trim body weight. Thus, 
the obese diabetic will gain one additional advantage when he or she chooses the right foods. Um, anyways, it keeps talking about fiber. I think um, that fiber is, um, it should be an obsession. It is for, for me, every time I'm going to eat something, I'm just thinking, does it have fiber? <laughs> Does it have fiber? Is the fiber intact? As intact as possible? Um, because fiber, imagine it as these little carts, like these, uh, um, like a train with all the little carts, you know, and the, and the, the, the fiber is, is going through, the, through your body and it's, and it's taking all the waste, all the, that is um, contaminants, it's taking it out. It goes out with the fiber and the water that we drink in drink or that we eat in fruits and vegetables. So I see that some of you wrote comments or questions. I'm going to turn off the camera because I have to get close to the screen here. And it says, um, should a person who isn't diabetic still uh, take an uh, over fat break over an overt fat break from nuts, seeds, and avocado for 10 days anyways to give our system a break from fat as well. Let me answer that. Does the fat from plant sources like nuts, seeds, and avocados cause acidity too in the body? Fiber is king. Well, okay, talking about, um, talking about fat from um, vegetable sources. No, it's not nearly that as damaging as the fat coming from animal products. But like if you, let's say fat from avocados or from nuts and seeds, well, you're eating the whole thing, okay? You're not, the, the problem becomes when we take out all the water, all the fiber and most of the nutrients as it's the case with any kind of oil. I don't care if it's corn oil, olive oil, um, avocado oil, coconut oil. I mean, any kind of oil, oil cannot have water, cannot have it, and it cannot have fiber. So you're, you're putting into your body 100% fat that is instantly absorbed, instantly absorbed. So yes, I think that if, if, if you want to see a quick, quick change, in your blood sugar levels, just give it a try for 10 days. Then would you and you and you keep track of your numbers. Then after the 10 days, you can gradually increase. If you if you like nuts and seed, you can gradually, gradually increase and see if that makes a difference. If you're if if if, if the insulin starts to not work well. And not get in, it means that unfortunately you you have to make a choice basically. Uh, do you want to be able to not be on any medication unless maybe it was a little insulin, but basically a lot of people don't have to take anything, or do you want to take medication and you can eat your nuts and seeds? Um, so I like the idea of a 10-day trial to be as um to be uh strict as possible. Remember that this way of eating is more delicious than the traditional way of eating with all of the toxins and fats and cholesterol that we were used to. And nowadays you have hundreds, actually not hundreds, thousands of easy, delicious recipes all over the place. I'm telling you about my YouTube channel because in my YouTube channel, you can find numerous ones. You can also find them in my Facebook page. You can also find it on my website, which is plantemas.com. And if you, uh, for some reason, cannot, which I doubt, um, you can email me, okay? Um, I have done so many webinars by myself. I have done them with Chef AJ. I have done, done them with Chef Catherine Lawrence um, from uh, the Physicians uh, Committee for, uh, what is it called? I, the PCRM, you know, uh, P 
PC Physicians Committee for uh, Responsible Medicine. Um, I have done webinars with Shada Soleimani. I mean, I have done webinars, cooking webinars. You can have web, you can have recipes for the rest of your life. Okay, so you can have delicious, filling, uh, health promoting food every day of the week, every meal of the day, and you will see the power. It will only take ten days. In some of you diabetics, by the second day, you will see the power. So let's see here what else you are saying. Um, my cholesterol went up after I started to remove unhealthy foods from uh, MU, MU diet. Oh, my diet, I guess. Uh, it went up because there was too much fat in the cells. And then thank you for answering my questions. Remember this. I say this often in my webinars. Our, all our bodies are different. They respond to medication in a different way. They respond in changes in diet in a different way. Um, sometimes it's very helpful to have a coach for just one time, maybe two times. You don't have to have a coach for the rest of your life. You could, um, I offer coaching sessions. You don't have to have it with me. You can have it with whoever you want, but I have helped a lot of people in just half an hour because there are things that may they may you may not realize that you're eating and they are actually the cause of that plateau or their cause of that high cholesterol um and you we have to be able to interact in a session so that i can ask you important questions and you can tell me exactly what you eat for a few days etc I find this topic of diabetes, diabetes very fascinating and very discouraging in many ways because um, I don't think that doctors want to harm you, but perhaps uh, they themselves don't know how to change their way of eating. So how are they going to tell you to change the way of eating if they don't know how to do it? Like, uh, you know, several decades ago when doctors would smoke and they would actually tell you which brand to, to, to buy to smoke because they smoked and smoking was not thought to be harmful for your body. So how could a doctor tell you to stop smoking if he or she was smoking in the same way? How can the doctor tell you to stop eating the standard American diet that has excessive amounts of fats and cholesterol and protein and, and uh, processed food when they're eating it and they don't know how to change it. So this is, uh, it's not, I don't believe, I believe it's not on purpose, but sometimes doctors think that a patient will, it's going to be too difficult for them to change uh, their eating habits, that it's much easier to pop a pill or have a shot of insulin. And yes, I think there are those patients out there, but a lot of people, a lot of patients who like to have information and then make up their own minds would like to know other options. And those other options are not given, and that's not fair for patients. Um, and I just, I'm very passionate about this because my father died of diabetes and he would be alive today if I knew this information. And um, it's just, it's just heartbreaking that so many people are suffering and dying unnecessarily. So one of you here is saying, um, Dr. McDougall addressed that issue once saying it will go up initially. Yeah, your cholesterol, but then will drop as the body is cleaning out the fat. So I would say give it a bit of time. Yes, very good. And uh, please feel free to, to look through my YouTube channel. There are webinars specifically uh, with, on that topic with Dr. McDougall. I'll try to put the links later on. Okay, so let's see. We um, I know I've given this a, a lot of time, but I just think this is so so important um okay so i'm going to switch here 
to my screen and share it with you. And here we go. Does the way I prepare my foods make any difference? Well, Dr. McDougall says cooking foods will increase the digestibility of the carbohydrates by breaking them into the simpler sugars and therefore the blood sugar will rise faster to a slightly, slightly higher level. Also, simplify grinding a food, uh, sorry, also, Simply grinding a food will change the blood sugar response, as when brown rice is ground into rice flour. An equal amount of flour will cause a greater increase in the blood sugar response than the whole rice kernel when eaten. Of course, when you eat the whole rice, the, you have the fiber there that is, that is um, helping to, to not let the blood sugar levels go up so high and so fast but when that fiber is just is, is uh, broken up and disturbed then of course you get you have flour and that's going to cause a greater incre increase in blood sugar levels even disrupting the fibers by using a kitchen blender will change the blood sugar and insulin response that's why we say that also for those 10 days try to not make any smoothies or any shakes Eat the food whole. Eat a whole apple, a whole pear. Eat a, a whole potato. Don't drink their juice. Don't make a. Try to eat the fiber and the water in its intact form. Therefore, to take a, the fullest advantage of a food, it should be consumed raw in its natural state. However, of course, we can't eat a raw potato. We can't eat a raw sweet potato either, but the actual overall, overall advantages of eating all foods in that way, that is raw, are small at most and inconvenient to say the least. For almost every diabetic, simple cooking or grinding of the food without removing the fiber has no serious nutritional consequence to their condition and makes the food a lot more palatable. High levels of triglycerides cause insulin to be less effective, and that is when insulin resistance develops. A change to the more health-supporting diet can reduce insulin needs dramatically. Let's see here. I don't want to keep repeating the same thing. So um, here's something important. Even today, the best official dietary advice is to take 50 to 60% of your calories as carbohydrates, 20 to 38% as fats, and 12 to 20% as proteins with way too much cholesterol and far too little fiber. Diabetics deserve a much better chance to regain their health. They should be taught the kind of diet that will best support their health and give them a better chance to stop taking daily medications. This weak compromise is not the answer to their needs. Um, so the person here is asking, will I be able to stop taking my insulin if I eat this way? Chances are that you will, Dr. McDougall says. As many as 75% of adult onset diabetics who take insulin can stop all medication soon after making this diet change. Many people who have been taking insulin injections for years are cured of their disease by this simple change in diet. Unfortunately, this is not true for insulin-dependent childhood onset diabetics. So Dr. McDougall says that you need to be under the, your doctor's supervision and uh, so that they can quickly make changes as needed. Will this diet work as well for people on, diabetic, on diabetes pills? On this diet, almost all diabetics taking pills can be freed of that daily medication. The safest way to make the change is to stop taking the pills as soon as the diet is started. After all, 
by definition, patients on pills are not dependent on insulin and have plenty of their own insulin. For this reason, there is little chance that they will go into a diabetic coma even if they stayed on a high-fat diet. Adjusting medication dosages may seem simple to experienced diabetics. However, if you plan to change your diet and lifestyle and you are on medication, then you should do so only under the supervision of your physician.